oh my gosh, and here appears Stefan from a cloud of smoke out of nowhere into your ears and eyes. Hello, everybody. It's aforementioned Stefan. And I'm here to just give you a little intro tug uh, as I pull you into the episode. And I'm going to keep pulling. And part of the rope that I'm going to use to lure you in is my special guest, Justin Willman, magician, comedian, show host. And um, he's also going to be the host of the new show of Netflix coming out in October, Baking Impossible. He's also the key brushstroke of the beautiful masterpiece on Netflix, Magic for Humans, where Justin Willman himself performs magic for humans. And it's delightful. It's absolutely incredible. When we talk about how he got into magic and um, the unfortunate accident that caused this serendipity. We talk about so much. And then, you know what? I did the favor of putting it all in a little grab bag for you. So you can just take it home and listen to it or consume it wherever you would like at your own time, you know, and, and I'm just that kind. And you guys are like, wow, that's on the cheap. Well, no, it's not on the cheap. It's actually free. It's better than cheap. Fry. That's how I say it in my household. So if you guys are feeling like, hey, I need to give back something, give forward, go forward. That's what life is about going forward. That's what all the greats say, like uh, Muhammad Ali and Dr. Seuss. He doesn't write backwards. He writes forward. I don't know if he's a great anymore. We talk about the wonderful, wonderful life of Wilman and all of the cool things he's done. And I prepared it in a little picnic basket for you guys to just Take with you wherever you'd like. Wait for the nice, the, the best setting, the ambiance, and then you could just pull it out on a grassy knoll and just let us enter your ears in ways that you never thought imaginable. Wow, Stefan, that was intense. I know, but you know, that's how sometimes we twist and turn at a comedy advice podcast. And if you guys want to twist and turn as you're leaving a review, as you're subscribing, as you're following on Instagram at a comedy advice podcast or supporting Justin, watch Magic for Humans on Netflix. I feel like I added a couple sticks on Netflix, but you know, that's how I pronounce things. It's an Arizona accent. Don't make too much fun. And while you're on Netflix, six, six, don't forget to, oof, I just made it evil. While you're on Netflix, don't forget to check out Justin Willman's new show, Baking Impossible, where he hosts it. And they're going to be some of the top bakers and chefs. And they're going to be teamed up with some of the top engineers. And they're going to be making some crazy looking treats. And it's going to be an optical sensation. It's going to be, it's going to make you salivate all the way through. You are going to need a napkin because you're going to be on the slobber train and watch out family, friends, dogs. You're going to be slipping up on your trail of slobs. So I think I'm selling it. So you guys are ready for it. And I think you're ready for the episode. So I'm going to let you dive right in. Here we go. No, no, not head first. Oh. Hey, man. Hey, Justin, how are you? Good. How's it going? I am doing fantastic for a Monday. How are you? I'm great. I love the room, by the way. Are those quilted pillows did you do oh, that? they are yeah this is in i'm in my office uh warehouse oh. space but i decided to make one corner of it feel kind of homey well you know you fooled you know? me i thought you were in the comfort of your own home i wonderful. know see it tricked you tricked you uh <laughs> how's my audio quality for you is it good it's wonderful yes. oh good all right let me batten down <laughs> the hatches here and i'll be right back <laughs> sounds good man all right, all right you're a saint <clears throat> thank you Oh, no problem at all. I hate on. Oh, no worries. I hate unbattened hatches. So I'm glad that yeah. they're able to get, get there. Everything's battened now. Okay, good. Right on. I, well, I'm sorry I missed you when I was in Phoenix. I know, I know. I was uh, very unfortunate, but I saw that my wife and I, we were traveling to Yellowstone National Park while you were at CB Live, which is fun like 10 minutes away from our house, but I saw some clips. It looked like you did incredible as always. It was good. It was good. It was my first time back in forever. So it was good. Oh, good. Good. That's great. And CB live is an incredible venue too. I don't know if you've performed there before or Tempe improv or stand up live, but it was my first time uh, at CB live first time there. And uh, I liked it. I like when a venue's got all the new 
up to date sound doodads you know it was great oh yes that's very true it was a state of the art their 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 hatches are definitely battened i will say but uh very Justin, bad. Yes. <laughs> um, I am I am honored to have you on the podcast. And you guys might be asking what podcast this is, by the way. It's a comedy advice podcast where I bring on a special guest, I being Stefan Satani, the host. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about them and then give some unsolicited advice to questions that strangers have asked on the internet. But um, Justin, I am honored to have you as I've said before you are magician uh, comedian uh, also we're the host of cupcake wars and uh, just a, an overall variety garden salad of entertainment I would say yes I love that you know magician comedian and then the cupcake wars doesn't really fall into either of those labels so it needs its own third label I get it I like it I, I, it was the frosting on the title cupcake if you will well it's an honor to be on the pod Oh, well, thank you. And I'd love to talk about all things Willman and um, including Magic for Humans, which is an incredible show. My wife and I were just left bewildered at a lot of the tricks. And I loved how you were able to kind of tie it into different themes uh, as well. And uh, but wanted to go back to the source of when it all started. And I know that sometimes for amazing things to happen, something's got to give. And I know in your case, Unfortunately, the thing that had to give were the bones in both of your front arms. And uh, you uh, in a, a ricicle accident, which I kind of combined Ooh. rollerblading and bicycle. I don't know if that's the correct term. Ricicle. It sounds like I was like uh, chewed up in a, in, a, in a rye mill at some point. Like an old fashioned <laughs> rye mill powered by, a, powered by pedals, you know, an Amish <laughs> rye mill. Oh, man. That, that, it does kind of sound like a rollsicle accident or a, <laughs> I, I, I call it bike blading where it's rollerblading while uh, riding a bike while also wearing rollerblades. None of them, none of them sound, uh, none of them make it any less dumb. The, <laughs> no, yeah. None of them quite capture the essence of the, I was going to say badass cause I've tried to blade and I've tried to bike. I can bike okay, but I never was into the blading. So for somebody to attempt both of those things at the same time, bold, um, maybe ill-advised, but bold. Well, it's, that's just, that's how I roll, you know, uh, with at least 10 wheels. 10, ten wheels. 10 wheel, 10 wheel roll. Yes. Almost a seven. Yeah. What, what gave was my wrist bones because I broke my arms at the same time. And my doctor recommended Oof. card, card tricks as physical therapy. And that's, that was like the catalyst. That's how I got into it. That's where it all began. Very, very cool. That, that, that rainbow ended at the end of the, the rain, the rice rain. And, and I know that when you started getting into magic and you start, I think it was Gibbles, the store that was the adult. Gibbles. Gibbles adult indeed. Toy and you're like, what is a Gibble? Well, Gibbles is the owner's last name backwards. So it was Lois Lobbig. Oh. That was her actual oh. last name. Yeah. But oh, that backwards okay. is Gibbles. Mm -hmm. Fun fact. I. I thought that was the trademark sexual toy of uh, that was just bringing in the dough. No, I was told to not look at that direction because it was a, yeah it was a half magic shop, half uh, adult novelty store. You know, penis straws and bachelorette party accoutrement, that kind of thing. Accoutrement, yes, a cacouterie board of mm -hmm. just sexual toys, if you will. Did you have to, so you just, it was half of the store, it was exposed. So when you were learning and taking lessons, it was all right there. It was all right there. It was actually, all they had was a magic counter. So maybe six feet of magic space and then hundreds of feet of penises. But I only focused <laughs> on the magic space, honestly, just because that's really all I was interested in in the time. Hey, that's fair. At 12 years old, I think that that's I mean, totally I remember fair. there were times where I would, you know, look over in another section and I would see like, uh, you know, a giant, like a penis mold to make jello. And I'd say, is that a trick? No. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. I'm not interested. <laughs> you know, because as a kid, you go to a magic shop and that brick and mortar experience is very important with magic because 
you get to like see the things and say, what the, what does that do? What's, what's this? Show me this, show me this. And you kind of soak it all in. And that's where you learn. That's where you like, you know, you kind of, some things are like, well, I can't tell you how that one works. That's an advanced thing. And then you kind of learn, oh, there's like, there's layers. I got to pace myself, you know, when, when I'm ready, the knowledge will be thrust upon me. And uh, there's not a lot of brick and mortar magic shops anymore. So that's an experience that sadly, a lot of kids don't get. I mean, they get the internet, but they can't ask a human questions, which is important. Right, right. And I know that you had had a mentor too. Was it Dr. Magic that was, yeah. was helping along the way? Um, and and I think that if I had heard correctly on an interview, you had also done magic and started to do, was the first show at an ice rink actually, or a, a roller rink? A roller skating rink, yes. Roller rink. Saints roller skating rink. And I would do, um, it was my first regular gig. I would do an hour and a half of face painting and in order to get to do a 20 minute magic show for all the kids whose birthday parties were they, you know, there that day. And I did not know how to paint faces at all. I'd never done it, but that was, that was, the, that was the deal. I had to paint faces. So I kind of, my mom taught me a bunch of designs and I, and I was terrible. Like, Many times I would screw up and I'd have to take a wet rag and wipe the kid's face just to get it all off. And say, Come back in five minutes when your face is, when your face is dry, I'll do it again. Um, and eventually I sucked so bad at painting faces and I was uh, so, you know, slightly above average at doing the magic part. They just let me do the magic part. Oh, very cool. What, by the way, what was yeah. the hardest thing that you did end up having to draw on somebody's face? Well, what did, what did they uh, ask for? What were the requests? Or were you like, Here's I had the menu. like hard, you hard, yeah. Um, um, flower, rainbows are hard because it's really hard to not get the paints touching one another and it becomes a mess. Um, dogs, not, not good. Not kidding. I would not do the whole face. It was just give me a cheek and I'll do a thing. I was bad. I couldn't even do stars well. I don't know. It wasn't my medium. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Singing and painting are not, that's not what I'm here for. I've been told oh, really? to stop both of those. Singing yeah. as well. Bad. Bad. Oh, man. You... Worse. Worse in recent years, too. Oh, my gosh. I, I, you have a nice voice, I'll say. And I, I felt like it could have been elevated to the singing level. But no, I think I'll leave that to the professionals. The... I've tried. <laughs> Speaking of Stephen, which. I've I... tried. Yeah. <laughs> well you you succeeded at a lot of things and if, if you weren't able to actually sing i think you've been close to those that really can sing well including bruno mars where i think that was the largest audience you performed for it eighteen thousand yeah. people or so. i'm gonna i'm gonna change i'm gonna change my angle here by the way just to oh, mix please. it up throughout the podcast to make any here. edits I'll very difficult here. um oh no I'll, I'll change it too just to make you feel comfortable okay good thank you uh jason mraz actually Jason Mraz. I did, I have done a show with Bruno Mars. He was also like on the lineup for this hilarity for charity, but it was Jason Mraz who I went on tour with and then opened for him at the Hollywood Bowl, which was the biggest audience. Oh my gosh, that, that is so cool. And I apologize to both Jason Mraz and Bruno Mars for getting them mixed up. They're, bo they're both awesome. And for a second, I thought, wait, maybe I did open for Bruno Mars, but <laughs> no, not that, not that cool yet. Oh man. I it's so interesting to me to see, I mean, on Magic for Humans, you you have performed in so many different types of mediums where, or, or different size audience where you perform for people uh, on the streets, where it might be one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you've performed like at CD Live in Phoenix and your tour dates, which are um, coming up in theaters and and different other places like that uh, for Jason Mraz with 18,000 people you've also done it in the nude <laughs> um, in different yeah. types of places um, is there a specific type of audience where it's really difficult to perform for for you or have you just done it so many times you're comfortable with whatever is thrown at you well um, any distracted audience is the worst to perform for so if I'm doing a, mm. an event a corporate event and the there's still an open bar at the back corner of a conference room that's bad because people will buy a drink and then there's there's talking and people hear talking they assume that you know it takes them out of it so anything like that is bad which means like at a music venue 
you know, at the Hollywood Bowl or whatever like that. It's it's filled with distractions. So, you know, because ideally you have a, a, a theater of people and all eyes are on you and people are uh, abiding right. by theater etiquette and it's uh, and it's a show, you know, they can hang on your word. But uh, you're not, you don't always have that luxury. So often like Hollywood Bowl, for example, which was, you know, 20 minute set and I'm kind of shitting bricks trying to think of what to do. You kind of select material that's a little more bulletproof and you you know are confident enough in it that you don't need to like rely on your rhythm of 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 applause and laughter and uh you know uh, volume of applause to know that you're killing you know what i mean you know like i okay here's 20 minutes i know i could do this in a room with zero feedback or i could i could just do this i, I know that this will kill you know what i mean because uh, the, the tempo is also thrown off in that you're used to hearing laughs in a comedy club, for example. It bounced right back at you really quick. But in a huge venue like that, there's like this, you kind of put a joke out into the universe and it's like a one, 1,000, two, 1,000. There it is. There's the, the laugh that comes back. But, uh, but it takes longer, you know, to bounce it off the back of that room. So you just kind of have to, uh, you know, autopilot through it. Yeah, it's like a a little avalanche of laughter just coming at it's you. It's like per, it's like similar to Zoom, for example. Like we're on Zoom right now, and even though the joys of modern technology are incredible, but like there's a smidge of a delay. So I need to know that it's 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 kind of similar in a big chaotic room room like that where there's just a little delayed delayed response. Yes, yes, I agree. I, I, ah, oh man, the Zoom, I, I love it. It's so cool that I'm able to speak with you right now um, from the comfort of your, your workshop couch, and I'm in my, mm -hmm. my studio. But the, those little intricacies, the little, the little delay, it just, it, it cuts off one little umbilical cord of human connection. And, it's true. Uh, but, but you know what? I'm still feeling, still feeling the magic, the Willman, and uh, it's great. But, um, <laughs> It, <laughs> it, it's um I, I also wanted to talk briefly about magic for humans amazing show as i was saying earlier i loved i i was just caught up on season three too and i know that you had had little themes for the different episodes i know there were vices there was death there was um uh, what was the other one that I was thinking of? Oh, uh, influence and and all sorts of different things. And I think it's so cool how you've been able to, one, I'll take one step back and just like in your, in the magic that you bring and in your persona, you've brought all of these different elements. You've got quirky, you've got smart and witty, you've got sexy, you've got all these different types of things where usually magic might be, uh, one character might have this maybe mysteriousness or they might have this um, dark or edgy or something. And I feel like you've been able to capture, bundle so many things. So it's like this picnic basket of, of Willman. And every episode that I see, you just get to see the overarching, for example, the influencer episode where the, <laughs> you brought three influencers in and you ended up, having that what was it the house of fruit where um, that, yeah house of fruit a selfie lover's paradise yes just a big yes. old play, yeah you know one of those uh yeah instagram pop-up uh, businesses kind of thing yes exactly a cornucopia for selfies yes. just so so many uh opportunities and you gave them different props uh you, well first they came in they gave you a little bit of a uh uh criticism constructive criticism on your instagram feed and all that and then you were asking them questions and then you ended up having them take selfies with different products i think there was a hemorrhoid ring which i didn't know was an actual thing um ice cube tray all sorts of different things and then they came back and they ended up taking they posted out of all the pictures they took and they posted the same thing with the same hashtag which was what you posted as well mind blown first off Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, those are my favorite kind of bits like that that are like multi-layered, uh, you know, mind trips where they. I mean, and they are as difficult and complicated as it sounds like. I mean, it's like just a, a, a one simple magic trick. It's like okay, this, 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 this. But when you're dealing with like a mental thing like that, where it's not 
it's like the ideas that you're trying to manipulate as opposed to objects you know it's it's uh it's hard i'm i'm that was a good day it was a good day for the ice cube tray not so much the hemorrhoid ring yeah yeah that's very true yes yeah, very tray cool it, and it was w really really cool to see the different types of psychology that you put into the 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 tricks or the the illusions or or uh, is tricks derogatory by the way can i say that? i'm cool with tricks tricks haven't been canceled yet okay i'm cool okay yeah the, and, and it led me to think about the other trick that you were showing people you you gave them a fake arm and you were saying that you could make the connection to their fake arm to the to them and the fake arm and you started doing stuff and they didn't feel on the covered arm uh, that was hidden and they felt things when you would light the uh, other arm on fire the fake arm or or put a pin to it or something which was so interesting to see how you kind of tie that together it's not just um it, there's me there's a mental layer to it, which I think is super cool. Yeah, thank you. You know, those are those those two bits you mentioned. I think are very inspired by my fandom of Darren Brown, who's a brilliant British mentalist, magician, performer, and um, you know, doing the Netflix series was a chance because I I don't consider myself like to be one type of one type of magician and you know, I don't know if you know this, but there are many types of magicians. There are many genres of magic and subsets and and I kind of like to be a, you know, I guess in the in the we call it a, a GP, a general practitioner of the art of magic, in that you kind of very much like a jack of all the trades of it, truly not a master of one, but a jack of all the trades of it has always been mm -hmm. most appealing to me. You know, I started as a kid's birthday party magician and I would do you know, walk around magic at restaurants or bar bar mitzvahs or weddings. And I, you know, did cruise ships for a little while and colleges and then comedy clubs and, you know, kind of enjoy performing for people of all ages in all different settings. So this making the show was a chance to get all of those settings, you know, with the, the, with a TV f format and a chance to, you know, you could be in some random place with me, a nudist colony or whatever, or a strange yeah. lab where I'm staging a fake experiment. Uh, and that's, I, I think, the goal of having a basket of Willman, you know, and kind of in different different flavors was always the, the fun appeal of this. Cause I, you know, have a hard time, you know, boiling myself down to just one little genre of it. So I got to do it all, which was fun. That's that's great. But and it was very cool to see how you're able to show the strengths of being that type of general practitioner and of being able to do a little bit of everything. And, and um, before, before I go on to the next question, I just have to also say my favorite bit that, that just had me in stitches was when you had the game with the children, where you would put a chocolate coin under a cup, out of three cups, and then you'd move them around, and you'd if they selected it, they got to have the chocolate coin, and um, that they you move it one, they point towards the chocolate coin, and you lift it up, and then uh, <laughs> the the there's a sound effect that goes boom, and then you lift it up, and there's broccoli, and you're like, oh dude, that's the broccoli, and I I don't know why it just hit me so hard because I was not ex I was expecting it to be gone right, but I wasn't expecting a broccoli there. So, or Brocklo. I don't know well, what the yeah, singular is. Broccoli. That, I mean, <laughs> that was my, you know, some of these ideas just come from like, oh, here's this, you know, wouldn't it be funny? Well, I just, I, I, you see online of different ways parents trick their kids into eating vegetables. Okay. So that's one part of the idea. But then also like, I love uh, packaging like very much like adult uh, lessons or advice or scenarios, but but, uh, you know, redressing them up as if it's for kids, you know, and I did something mm -hmm. with the peanut, mm -hmm. peanut butter and jelly jar to kind of tell this, you know, state, make the statement about the transgender bathrooms thing years ago when that was, you know, yeah. uh, popping off in Virginia, I guess. But, uh, but this was a chance to kind of like, let's, wouldn't it be funny to teach kids the woes of gambling, you know, in a kid friendly way. Because anytime, that's the thing, it's like with magic, and I know this just from my kids' birthday party days, is that kids are um, uh, like raw, real, 
there's something just about watching like even when there's a camera present you know a kid will kind of forget about the camera and you actually get a real genuine yes. reaction and it's and it's really hard to find adults when you do magic for especially when you're out in the streets to actually behave like an ordinary human when there's a crew and a camera yeah. filming you know it's hard for them to forget that um and that's kind of what you're seeking i think as a magician but also as a viewer is that you want to you want to see humans reacting authentically and uh kids are good for that yeah it, it was so good to see that there was one kid in particular that hated broccoli because you're like oh adults when they gamble and they lose they have to eat their losses so you got to eat exactly the broccoli. exactly that one kid was not having it. He was retching. And at the end, at the very end, I don't want to spoil it, but he's just walking away and, and uh, cursing at you. So I thought that was. <laughs> yes. That's, if you can get a, get a kid to cuss at you, you've done something with your life for sure. <laughs> oh, well, phenomenal. Justin, we can just wind oh, wow. down with some, some advice. Um, yeah. Yes. What kind of advice? What can I do? Well, well, uh, we've got some questions here from the internet, but before we get into that, I wanted to, I like inspirational quotes. I'm a quote guy. So I usually like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that, you know, um, help pick them up when they're feeling Ooh. down. You know, well, let me make sure I quote it right. There's one that I was reminded of just the other day. What, while you're looking for it, I'll say that one quote that I liked was I think you were speaking with Pete Holmes, maybe Ron Funches, and you were saying you aspire to be like Bruce Springsteen, where yeah. you don't aim to be just a flash in the pan, but have a consistent body of work because it, it's not, there's nothing really that stands out with Springsteen, perhaps, because it's all great. And I, I do feel, I have to say, I'll give you this compliment. Uh, well, I'll gently hand it over to you because it's a, a good one, but I feel like as I've seen all the work that you've been doing, it is consistently good. And I feel like you're just going to keep growing and growing. So. Well, thanks, all. man. Yeah. That I've always liked that model. Cause when you, like, when you think of Springsteen, it's never like, Oh yeah, his album is great at this. It's kind of like he's done so much so that it's, you are, are you a fan of this person and their body of work? Yes. You know, like, and everything they've done falls with within it, but no one, no, no one of those things is like you know the def the definitive thing this was also something just to take pressure off myself from you know you i i like to, i kind of i'm perfectionist i care a lot about the things that i do but once you've done it you need to like let go of the concern for other people's judgment of it you know as long as you you made yeah. it the best you could be in that moment and and after that you just need to let it go and move on to the next and not be tied to its individual success or failure so my good friend the comedian daniel kino uh, mm -hmm. who every so once, every once in a while gives me sage advice. And that was it. He says, if it's not about that one thing, you know, it's about the body of work. So just on to the next. And it kind of helps release you from the, the, uh, the potential failures or at least less successful than you expected it to be. And it also kind of keeps you from getting too cocky about any one things, you know, big success. It kind of keeps you, keeps you even, which is nice. Yeah. And that Mark Twain quote, I liked 20, 20 oh. years from now, he says, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. Oh, and then he says, so throw off the bow lines, sail away from safe Harbor, just to add a little batten down the hatches callback. But yeah, oh. I love that quote because I will hem and haw about a decision or just like, uh, I get I, I get decision fatigue unless I really make a point to avoid it and uh, try to say yes to as much as possible. So, yeah, hmm. I like well, that one. That the, the great. My tummy is full from all those delicious quotes that we just <laughs> good. We good, just good, ended good. up talking about. All right, uh, I know we're a little bit over. Is it? Do you have time for one question, Justin? Yeah, or should it, we? Come on. Know? Yeah, we're good. All right. All right. All right. Okay, so this first quiet, this first and last question is hugging coworkers. I, 23 year old female, have been working in a restaurant for three years now. I have made a few good female friends that I also see outside of work. I often hug them at work and we are affectionate to one another. Recently, a bartender and me have been more playful to each other in a physical way. He pokes me, plays with my elbows, and I do the same. I enjoy our little complicity. 
A few days ago, as I was going for his elbows as a way to greet him, he thought I was offering a hug. We ended up hugging. While I enjoyed it, I'm scared that it might be inappropriate. I don't know if this is relevant, but we both have significant others. Okay, interesting. Are you a hugger, Justin? I'm a hugger, um, but it sounds like this is different than a hugging coworker. It's like, hey, oh, hey, buddy, have a great weekend, or you know, have fun over yeah. Christmas. Uh, this sounds like this hug fell within the context of some physical flirting, which makes yes. it different than I, I imagine. This was not a casual hug. I imagine the bartender made a long, assumed it was for a long embrace, right? You know, it's kind of like a mm. different thing. I don't know. They both. Well, it sounds like they're both being naughty and it's not going to end well. That's because that's what I was yeah, thinking too. Not good. I mean, she, it was a, she who asked it was, yeah, well, it doesn't, she didn't ask a specific question. I think she just needed, she might've thought this was a Catholic confessional because she just kind of admitted <laughs> her sin. So our answer is three Hail Marys and you will yes. be, you'll be forgiven. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, not even forget forgiven not by your not by their significant others i'm sure i would say oh yes uh, dial it back yes i i agree with that too i I think work 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 husbands work boyfriends work girlfriends it doesn't doesn't end well it doesn't work oddly enough it doesn't it doesn't especially i mean the elbow play is where it got to me when you start playing i don't know what type of elbow play this is but poking an elbow play it's it's leading towards i mean more devious and and uh salacious poking well other yeah play. elbow elbow play reminds me of you know like when you're in like fourth grade or fifth grade and the, you know there's a girl you have a crush on you know you kind of you disguise uh flirting within the like just kind of being a being a being a dick like uh-huh, oh put uh, your backpack down you know like yes, so elbow yes. play does sound a little um elementary yes Elbow yeah. play sounded like a whole new type of fetish to me because I thought it was let me, just elbowing. Let me look it up on Pornhub. Hold on. <laughs> no, no, that's I'm already there. That's why I found the Mark Twain quote. I can find this. Too. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, they're just right next to each other in subcategories. Uh-huh. So, oh, God. All right. Well, I think it's time to batten down this hatch and say goodbye. Justin, what a wonderful time it was to have you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. This was lovely. Thanks for doing your, your homework. Very impressive. Uh, reminding me things that I wouldn't have been able to maybe tell you details right now on the spot. So thank you for being so well researched. Oh, when I have a great guest such as yourself, uh, one has to do their research. But uh, I also, I wanted to ask, what would you like to plug? What have you got going on? Where can people find you? All that glorious stuff. Well, I'm in my warehouse space now, kind of gearing up for the tour, Magic for Humans in person tour, doing a bunch of dates That's... through the end of the year and early into the next year. And uh, I can't wait. People should come see a show. All the shows will be as COVID safe as possible with the venue and um, a bunch of new magic. And I feel like we all have a bit of a renewed appreciation and excitement for live entertainment because we were robbed of it for so long so i can't wait to see people yeah oh and i have a new netflix show called baking impossible that i'm hosting and it's kind of a combination of baking and like engineering which to me is really what magic is so it's kind Mm -hmm. of finally a a finally a culinary magical uh love child coming out in october Oh baking, my gosh. Baking that... impossible. Oh, fantastic. I cannot wait to feast my eyes on that. Feast on that. that sounds... Yeah. Oh, mm, tasty. Oh, once I'm, well, yeah, once I'm full from these quotes, once they get expelled, then I can, uh, uh, well, go the into quotes that. fill the brain stomach and then the, the, the icing will go down here. You're welcome. I was not good with anatomy. So my, well, my sh- organ sh- tummies here is where I'm saying. Yeah. Versus up here. You got it. Oh, uh, excellent. And for all of you guys thinking, where am I going to find all this stuff? It's going to be in the show notes. So just go over there, click, show, notes. show some love, show some support. And that's the episode. Thank you guys so much for listening, for hanging in there, strapping yourselves in for the whole episode, keeping those arms and legs inside of your vehicle. I can't just say how good you are to your parents 
That's why I'm going to put all these gold stars in your report card. You can take it home. Tell mommy and daddy yourselves. But if you guys want to reciprocate those stars, you feel free to go onto Apple Podcasts or YouTube and you can leave stars in the comments or just leave those stars on Apple Podcasts, leave a review, subscribe, tell your friends, share wherever you can. And Justin Willman, don't forget to support him. He's on his live Magic for Humans tour. And uh, there's a link in the show notes for tour dates. Also check him out on Netflix and support him. Okay, my friends, thank you so much. Mon amis, mes amis. I don't know what the plural is. I don't speak French. I don't know why I keep trying to make French happen. I'm like Gretchen Wiener of podcasting. But I'm going to go fetch a glass of water and let you guys just be and ruminate on this wonderful episode. Thank you guys so much. Big old gooch smooch. Mwah.